Tonight on A Week in League, we'll be talking LCS, LPL, LCK, LEC, Team Herdix acquire Misfits LEC spot, TSM considered selling LCS spot, TSM roster moves, and so much more right after the intro. Welcome to A Week in League, where we cover League of Legends esports all around the globe from all four major regions. I'm your host, Slomar, and let's just get right into the news. As usual, timestamps and references will be in the description, and while you're down there, don't forget to smash that like and subscribe button. Thanks. Things are getting heated in the LPL with only four playoff spots remaining. This means that we already have six teams locked into playoffs, and those teams are TES, JDG, RNG, V5, WBG, and EDG. This also means that any team with 10 losses can no longer make playoffs. This means that three teams are out of playoffs contention already. Those teams are Ultra Prime, RA, and WE. EDG, RNG, and OMG all went 2-0 last week. And with RNG defeating JDG last week, this makes the top four closer than ever. We touched on the RNG resurgence last week, and this week they continue their win streak going 2-0. Can they keep this form for playoffs? Can they have a strong showing at Worlds? We'll just have to wait and see. V5 lost both their games last week to LNG and JDG. And while it's hard to say what's really going on at V5, I just hope that they get it back together for playoffs. OMG's Shanji gets his third Rookie of the Week award to make him tied with TES Wayward in the most Rookie of the Week awards this season. RNG's Jauhu is the best player of the week. RNG's Breath, OMG's Aki, RNG's Jauhu, TES Jackie Love, and EDG's Mako round out the best of week five in the LPL. Time for Game of the Week, and this week it's V5 versus JDG. The series was an absolute bloodbath with over 30 kills in the first game and 40 kills in the second. JDG managed to win 2-0, but both games were pretty close. 369 put on some impressive performances and managed to get Player of the Game award for both games this series. V5 got to play Draven Renata bot lane and that's always fun to watch. Anyways, go watch it. Now let's take a look at the LPL standings. As you can see, we have the top six that are already locked into playoffs, and that's TES, JDG, RNG, V5, WBG, and EDG. Man, it's gonna be an exciting playoffs just with those six teams making it in. In seventh, we got AL, then OMG, LNG, and FPX to round out the top 10 in the LPL. With only two weeks left in the regular split, things will definitely heat up in the LPL as there's only four spots left. We touched on this a bit last week, and that was the T1 versus Gen G match. And it was a banger. T1 win both early games, however, Gen G managed to turn it around with impressive team fighting and dragon control. Gen G's Peanut brings out a new pick, and that's Skarner. And while we're talking about this game, this is also the game of the week. If you care about either team or the top teams in the LCK, or maybe you just want to watch some Skarner jungle, that's the game for you. And with that out of the way, let's talk about the rest of the LCK. Gen G and KDF are the only two teams to go 2 0 last week in the LCK. HLE and DRX go 0 2, and everyone else goes 1 1. Honestly, not much else happened in the LCK this week. We still only have two teams locked into playoffs, and that's T1 and Gen G. With two weeks left in the regular season and only four spots for playoffs, things are definitely going to heat up in the LCK. Now, let's take a look at the LCK standings. We got Gen G and T1 top two locked into playoffs, then Dom1 Kia, LSB, KT, DRX, KDF, NS, BRO, and HLE to round out the top 10 in the LCK. Misfits, Vitality, and Mad Lions all go 2-0 last week. BDS, XL, and Rogue go 0-2, and everyone else goes 1-1. 
Perhaps the most impressive thing from last week is Vitality going 2-0 against G2 and XL. And maybe the most surprising thing is XL going 0-2. In my opinion, Fnatic and XL are looking very unstable at the moment, but I still have hope for them to lock in a playoff spot. With only two weeks left in a regular split, only BDS is out of playoffs contention. No one else is locked into playoffs just yet, especially with seeding, and if things keep going the way they're going, I can see many tiebreaker scenarios. Get ready for the last day of the LEC broadcast to run late into the LCS. I'm calling it right now. Time for Game of the Week, and this week it's Vitality versus G2. The only reason I'm picking this is Herc's got to style on his former teammates playing Ari going 10-0-7. He had a great game. Anyways, just give it a watch. Now let's take a look at the LEC standings. We have Mad Lions in first and a two-way tie in second place between Rogue and Vitality. G2 and Misfits are tied for fourth place. Astralis and Fnatic are tied for seventh with SK and BDS rounding out the top 10 in the LEC. While things have settled down a bit since last week, we still have a very close LEC league and it's hard to really say who's gonna make it in the playoffs. This week, it was the Star Guardian event in the LCS to celebrate all the in-game events that are happening right now. C9, 100 Thieves, CLG, and EG all go 2-0 last week in the LCS. While TSM and TL go 1-1, everyone else went 0-2 this week in the LCS. The LCS broadcast is still putting on a great show with segments like the Star Guardian draft and the Fudge tier list during the analyst desk. It's segments like these that separate the LCS product from all the other leagues that we're watching. Good job guys, keep it up. The LCS playoffs will have 8 teams participating in it, making the playoffs race in North America a little less hype in my opinion. However, we already have 2 teams locked into playoffs and that's EG and 100 Thieves. I think because of the LCS playoff format, all the top teams are going to secure a spot in playoffs. Time for Game of the Week, and this week it's C9 versus TL. The game was very close and decided by a couple fights, and TL was playing a timeless classic with Lulu Kogma bot lane. C9 Berserker had an impressive game and ended up getting the Player of the Game award. Not much else to say about this one, go watch it. Let's take a look at the LCS standings. We got EG and 100 Thieves locked in the playoffs in top 2 with a three-way tie in third place between C9, CLG, and TL. FlyQuest is in sixth, and a two-way tie in seventh between Golden Guardians and TSM. Immortals and Dignitas round out the top 10 in the LCS. Welcome to an other news where we discuss news that may or may not be relevant to the scene. This week's headline is, we had some rumors about this last week, but now it's confirmed. Misfits sell their LEC slot to Team Herdix. That's not all for Misfits. They will also be backing out of the LFL, which means Misfits will have no presence in League of Legends. Sad to see an organization that's been around for so long just kind of dip out on League, but I get it. On a side note, I really wish this was K Corp, but what can you do? In other news, TSM has recently considered selling their LCS spot. Not sure how I feel about this since TSM is one of the legacy LCS orgs that have been around since the very beginning. I'm no TSM fan, but this is still kind of sad news. The bigger question here is, if TSM is considering this, what about teams like Golden Guardians, Immortals, Dignitas? Could they be next? I don't know, I'm no expert, but what happened to all that FTX money, TSM? That crypto cash is drying out or what? In other news, Artem Baikov has been named the new LEC commissioner. The new commissioner has a long history in esports and has worked for companies like Navi and Blizzard. He was recently the general manager for ESL. Excited to see what this guy can do on the LEC. In other news, last week we discussed the world's locations, seating, and dates. And while we still don't have an official bracket for the tournament, it is very unlikely that we will have double elimination this year just based on the scheduling. There just simply isn't enough room between all the quarterfinal and the semifinal games to have double elimination. 
Keep in mind that this is community speculation and nothing's been confirmed yet, but I'd say this is pretty confirmed if you ask me. Now with most of the franchising leagues implementing double elim in their playoffs format, I still don't understand why Worlds doesn't have it, but I just hope they can fix it for next year. In other news, Vitality Bo is dominating EU West solo queue and is on his way to become rank 1. It's difficult to say if Vitality will choose to slot in Bo this late in the season, but maybe they can run some kind of weird 6 man lineup in playoffs? You never know. In other news, the LCK studios at LOL Park will be putting down additional security measures after receiving threats against T1 and KT. The LCK has released an official statement on Twitter and you can read more about it in description. In other news, TSM has made more roster moves heading into this week with Seoul requesting to return to Academy and Solo coming up to the LCS stage. Things are looking a bit rough at the TSM camp this split. We'll have to see if the constant roster moves are going to impact their playoffs performance. In other news, Golden Guardians acquire Star Jungler River from Dignitas. Not much else to say about this move other than I'm pretty sure Dig is not going to make it into playoffs now. See ya! In other news, Riot will eventually stop adding new champions to the League of Legends roster to avoid confusing new players. A Riot Games developer said on a podcast that there are discussions going on at Riot about the final League champ. This is an effort to avoid scaring away new players and to maintain the overall intuitiveness of League of Legends. As you may know, 1214 is going to be the base patch for Worlds this year, meaning that there will be no more major changes into the upcoming patches until Worlds. With 1215 around the corner, Riot's nerfing some damage champions, buffing engage supports, and perhaps the most exciting part of all this is that they're buffing all energy champions. Outside of Lee Sin, all the other energy champions see very little pro play, so it will be exciting to see if this change can bring some of these champions back into the meta, like Shen and Akali. Only time will tell. If you want to read more about the upcoming changes, link in description. In other news, while technically this is not League related, I'm going to cover it anyways. The head developer and executive producer on the League of Legends MMO, Greg Ghostcrawler, has answered a bunch of questions in a long Twitter thread. He said, one of the most common questions we get is why we announced the League MMO in such a weird way and when we will provide more real information. Adding, the announcement was the idea of our CEO. We thought it made sense to low-key announce to help with recruiting, excite players, and because we thought it would likely leak anyway. Now there hasn't been much said about the League of Legends MMO since the Riot 10 year event, so don't get your hopes up. The upcoming League of Legends MMO does not have a release date and is still very early on in its development. Another story that is not League related, but we're gonna cover it anyways, Riot Games put out a developer diary on their YouTube channel talking about Project L. Now if you don't know about this, Project L is Riot Games' 2D fighting game that was also announced during the 10 year anniversary event. The game is going to be an assist based fighter with two champions per team. The game has a very distinct art style and the core gameplay mechanics are in place. The team is now working hard on expanding the champion roster and working with other feature sets like the shop and the social systems. The dev diary is only 2 minutes long and I highly recommend you watch it. I'm very excited for Project L and the League of Legends MMO soon enough there will be a game for every gamer by Riot Games. And that's the end of our show for this week. And I just want to say thank you so much for all the support. If you're enjoying the show, please consider subscribing. Tune in next week where we cover League of Legends esports all around the globe from all four major regions. Have a good night and good luck in solo queue.